Welcome to the Soft Demolish Exercise 6 Mod Tool. In this Noesis Quick Start module, we're going to go through an overview of the Mod Tool user interface and the tools you use to start creating assets. One of the first things you'll need to do is get comfortable moving around your scene, which can be viewed in a variety of ways. So let's start with camera navigation. Right now we are in the default camera or user view. Left click on the icon located at the top right of the window and it will shrink to reveal our four isometric views. The top, the front, the right, and the user or camera view. Left click on the icon again to maximize our view. By default, our mouse is in select mode. When you hover over any of these items, you will get the name or purpose of the icon, as well as the shortcut. Under General Navigation, our first tool is used to track, dolly, and orbit the camera view. We can click on the icon or press the S key on the keyboard. By clicking the left mouse button, we can begin tracking. Use the middle button to dolly and right click to orbit. At the bottom of the screen, we have an information toolbar. This very conveniently tells us which action each mouse button will perform left click to track, middle to dolly, and right click to orbit. This will refresh according to what tool you have selected while the cursor is in a perspective window. To return to the selection window, press spacebar. Let's make an object so we can better understand camera navigation. Go to create, click on objects, and left click on sphere. A sphere appears along with its property page. We will get more into detail about this window later. For now, just close this box. In order to reset our view, hit R on the keyboard. Now we can track around our object. Press the S key, or just click on the Track Dolly Orbit tool. There we go. Left click to track, right click to orbit, and middle click to dolly. Now since we've pressed the S key, we are in sticky mode. By either pressing the S key again, or releasing the S key if you have it held down, will return us to our previous tool. In this case, the selection tool. Press and hold the S key to access our camera. When you release S, it returns to our selection tool. If we do a quick tap and release of the shortcut key, our tool will be active until we change to a new tool. Now if you're holding the S key, release it. As you can see, we've returned to our selection tool. If you instead had pressed S before, to return to your previous tool, just press S again. Now let's go over framing. So now dolly into your sphere. Select it. Under general navigation, we have the option of framing the selection in a single view or in all views. The respective shortcut keys are F and A. If we click on the frame all, it will be framed but we won't see it in all of the views because we only have one view open right now. Camera moves can be undone and redone under the general navigation toolbar. The shortcut keys are Alt-C to undo and Alt-Y to redo. Users who are more familiar using Alt for camera navigation can switch to a QWERTY keyboard layout by going File, Interaction Model, and selecting your preference. Now we press Alt to access camera navigation and the keyboard shortcuts have changed to a QWERTY model. Each of the icons will still perform their intended functions. Alright, let's switch back to an XSI interaction model. Let's take a look at three important tools which will help us organize our scenes. In our views panel, we have the explorer, the schematic, and the browser. Click on the explorer. The explorer shows us all the contents of our scene in a hierarchical tree structure. We have scene root, which includes our camera, a light, and any objects we've added. 
such as our sphere. If we click on the object in our Explorer window, we can select it in our scene as well as access all the object's properties. We can choose to isolate the Explorer to only show what we have selected, or show the entire scene, as well as the full tree, or just the objects themselves. The second view is the schematic view. This shows the relationship between our object hierarchies. The sphere is currently selected, but we also have a light, the camera, and its interest or location where the camera is focusing. However, in our scene, you'll notice that we only see the sphere. This is because the camera root and the light are hidden. Notice how their boxes are outlined, not filled like the sphere. Drag to select each object, excluding the sphere. Under Display, press H. You can also press H on your keyboard. Click on the top right icon to see all the main four views again. And for a moment, just close the schematic window. Now we will frame all the objects within our scene. Click on any of the other view windows to make the window an active window, then click on the Frame All button under General Navigation. Now that our objects have been unhid, we can see our camera and its interest. You may want to frame your other views as well. Let's reopen the schematic window. Here's the camera. Here's the camera's interest. And a null root, which contains them. The explorer and the schematic show us the same information displayed differently. Both are extremely useful for organizing your scene, locating elements, adjusting parameters, and tracing relationships between objects. Right now, let's get a clean slate and start investigating how we can control objects we create. Go to File, New Scene. There's no need to save this one. Click to create a new sphere from the Objects menu. Along with the object comes its property page. On top, we see the name. Here we can rename the object to wherever we want. Let's name it Ball. Then we have the radius. If you drag the slider, you will change the radius value of the object within your scene. By holding Shift while you drag, you can get a more precise value. I'm going to hold Shift, just like that. By holding Control, the opposite will happen. Much bigger. Under Geometry, we have the divisions in U, which is horizontal, and V, which is vertical. So right now our sphere is divided into 8 vertical and 8 horizontal sections. We can add sections as we want. Even if the slider appears to be at its limit, you can still type in the number manually. Say, 48 by 60. If we click on the I under Display, we can get even more information on our selected object. This tells us we've selected one out of five objects in our scene, and the total number of triangles in each case. Watch as the number of triangles change as we drag the sliders. You can see how quickly the number of triangles increases as we increase the number of horizontal and vertical units in our sphere. Let's return back to 8 in U and V, and let's close the property page. To get our object property page back, we can do the following. Open the Explorer, make sure you are in the Show Tree mode, Expand Ball, and then we can either single click on the P icon, or double click on the Polygon Mesh Line item. Now we can return at any point to modify our parameters.